So there you have it. Percy's Pepper Box, the list. Uh, this one is functioning uh, in so much as when you pull the trigger, the barrel and the hammers actuate. So it'll actually go through all the different names. There are a couple of non-printed parts in here, but the majority of this, I would say 98% of it is printed. The rest of the video is gonna be how to assemble this, go through all the parts that are in here, uh, which parts are sensitive to tolerance, um, the orientation that I printed them in, and how to put it all together so that it works. The pieces are all laid out according to how I printed them, the orientations they were in. Um, these were printed, sorry, that's not true. Now they are. Uh, these were printed face down. Uh, I sanded these sections, uh, left this, the printed texture, which I uh, used as the wood grain. The barrel was printed upright. Uh, there's a little bit of support material on the inside, um, but that gave me, I don't know, the best uh, printing for my printers. Barrel tube was printed like this. There's a little bit of support on this under edge, um, but about like that. Obviously, some of these pieces like these guys are simple. Little guys are also simple, just like printed on their face. Uh, this guy has a slight angle on one end, so when you print it, just try and print that side up. Same goes for this guy. There's one little angled up area, so don't print it upside down. These guys were printed kind of upside down in this orientation because this surface and these internals are more important than sanding your life away with some uh, overhangs. Um, so these tolerances are tighter and more important, so these body pieces were printed that way. Uh, this part was printed in this orientation as one piece. It comes as one piece. It might separate. Uh, it's a little easier to put together, actually, if it separates. Um, and then there's a little bit of an overhang on this side that needs some sanding, but it is pretty minor compared to if you were to flip it. Um, barrel axle was printed like this to give me as much strength through here because I didn't want to have layer lines does mean there's a sanded side to it. Uh, you can choose to either print it like this um, so that your circles don't have any um, support in them, or you can print it like this if you want one of the circles to have support in them. Um, hammers were also printed like this. It means there's overhang on this side, um, but there'd be overhang on the outside, which is the visible side if you printed them this way around. So again, this guy printed this on its flat face because this piece has a slight overhang here um, and you wouldn't want to print it like this because then you'd have tons of support material all around there. Um, this one's fairly obvious. These pieces were printed with uh, DLP. This is resin printed. Everything else is printed with filament. I chose PETG because it's what I use most. Um, these are fairly finicky and complex pieces. Uh, you could probably print this one with filament, these two would be quite tough with filament. Um, I did print this in filament once, but this whole uh, diameter and size is fairly important. So it will take some sanding to get that back to where it needs to be. Um, this one again, it's got some really tight tolerance through here and then these little spots and a slight square on the inside of here, which mates with this piece. Um, so that's the ratchet, ratchet catch, and hammer axle. This one is quite complex. It's got lots of overhangs, lots of little shoulders that it needs, a hexagon and little indent, which interface with the hammers. Um, you could probably print this. It would be tough because you want this piece to be strong, so you want your layer lines this way, but then you have layer lines across your shaft, which uh, no one wants that with their shaft. Um, and then you have a couple of unprinted pieces. There are some axles which are 2.85 millimeter filament because I have that. If you don't, uh, I believe a eighth inch rod will work if you have steel rod or something like that. Um, but the filament is great uh, because it's fairly consistent. There are three springs, one compression, two extension. Um, they just sort of help snap everything back and forth. Four bearings, there's two regular bearings. These are just like skateboard, rollerblade, very generic bearings. Um, they mate with this barrel axle. And then I had to end up adding a couple more bearings um, which slide on the exterior here, which just help binding in the barrel because the barrel is quite heavy, so it wants to bend and that binds it more. So these bearings were kind of necessity. 
Um, and then there's just a bunch of magnets. These are half inch by one eighth inch magnets. They have neodymium magnets. This part has spots on each of them for three. I found you only really need two of them. If you want that extra strength, you can put another one in here. Um, so that's an option for you, but I have not. Um, there's another spot for magnets on these, on this side, which interfaces with one of these. Um, and then these back ones interface with each other. There's also spots for magnets on the inside here, which interface with these magnet holes. I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm gonna do that. The way mine printed, uh, they go together with enough um, tightness that I haven't needed it yet. And I've been taking this apart and putting it back together so many times that I just haven't got around to it. I might do that. So that is an option for you. Um, I think in total there are 10 places for magnets, which would be two, four, these each have three, um, which is six, uh, and then two more. So 12 total areas. I've used sort of 10. Um, yeah, so that's sort of the overall idea of how to print it, where you need to watch out for certain tolerances. A lot of these things are going to need sanding and fine tuning. Um, any really important face that meets another face, uh, for instance, um, the way this mounts into here and registers, I decided to go slightly big and sand back to it. That allows a little more flexibility in people's printers and in my own printers. So you can find those like really nice fits and you don't have to just print it 900 times. Um, it's easier to print it once and sand it for 10 seconds. Uh, the same is for these retaining rings. Um, this one is the sort of most finicky. There is a slight draft on this. So the one side, which is why I've got little arrows, is slightly bigger than the other side. So when these two parts are together, you want the bigger side to go on first because it's easier to put it on. And then as you hammer this on, it'll squeeze this end tight. Um, so be aware there is a slight draft to this. You might have to measure that. You can kind of tell when you look at it, but if you can't tell, um, you should measure it. And if there's not a huge difference, then uh, there's not a huge difference. It's not a, it's like, I think it's like half a degree and it's across like, you know, three quarters of an inch. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah, so first part that you're gonna be working with is body left. This is the part I printed the most. Um, there is one of the uh, leaf springs that go in here. Uh, the leaf spring file is much longer um, because there's two of them. There's one in this piece and then one in this piece. Um, and it's easier just to print that flat and cut it to the size that you need. The important thing here is that this leaf spring clears back into this notch. So that's about as long as you want to make it. And then you might have to sand this little connection um, where it slots in. And then I just hit it with a little dab of glue to make sure that, that one doesn't come out. One thing I will say about these leaf springs, um, they wear out because they're just printed material. Uh, this one is just straight printed material. Whereas this one, I actually have it backed, see if I can separate them slightly. I have it backed here with a, um, with a piece of spring steel. Um, and that is because this piece be being longer and having more force applied to it would break over time. And I didn't want to constantly replace that piece. So you don't need that. It will work without it, but it won't work for as long. You'll have to replace that piece eventually as the material wears out. So that is just a piece of spring steel rod. Um, I will, in the write-up there will be exactly what material I used and I heat press that in. So just like you would do with a heat set material, a soldering iron or heat it up with a torch, stick it in and trim it down. Okay, now to actually constructing. The sort of first parts are gonna be our ratchet catch, which slots onto this little round hole and you need it to have a little bit of back and forth here. And that is the reason that this hole needs to be so important. Um, you also need your trigger. This part sits in here and is obviously your trigger. You will need one of your uh, extension springs. You will also need a couple of um, these little bits of filament. 
and I'm probably gonna guess the wrong ones because these have been measured by now, but you can just use longer piece, stick it in and then trim it back, which is how I got to these sizes. Um, so the first part is putting a spring in. Let me just double check this. This piece feels like it's a hair long. Um, you might need a nice pair of pliers or tweezers or something for some of these. Um, you know, it's probably this one that looks a little more mangled. Yeah. Um, so this piece slots into here and then comes down and is pulled back by the spring. Um, so you want to put your spring onto here like so, and then it goes in and it gets pulled back. That way the spring can't pop off on the inside. Um, this is a finicky thing to sort of push into here. But once it goes in, it doesn't really want to come out, which is, which is what we want. So you can see there, now this spring is nice and caught. And then it catches onto this little piece of our trigger. So it's slightly bigger than the hole of this spring that I have. So it takes a little bit of convincing, uh, but that's better than it coming off a lot. Uh, next, we'll go with another piece. This fits through our piece here, and it fits into a little notch inside the body, which is right there. So now we have that spring action which is the trigger. The next piece is our little ratchet catch. This sits here, oh no, sorry, on the hole. And these two interface in that little slot there. So the uh, trigger actually pulls it down and then it goes back up again. So those two made like that. So you can see that that tolerance is quite tight. Um, if you are having an issue with it, it might be, um, sanding one or the other, but it needs to catch it on the way down to pull it down slightly. Um, and then from here, all of this gets sort of held in place by our body insert, the lower half. And that slots onto here nicely, like so. And you might need to wiggle this just to get that to seat. Now you can see we have a nice little window here with a peg here and a peg here. That is our only compression spring. It goes in there. So I find it's easiest if you slot it onto one or the other, but one side, you take your tweezers or pliers and you sort of compress it in and out. So now we have that nice ratchety, and you'll see in here that it always wants to sit at the top. It does get pulled down just a little bit and then it pops back up. So that's that action. Next, you can check to make sure that your uh, barrel axle and your bearings are situated correctly. Um, so I like to just make sure that that sort of spacing is good here. Oh, wrong way around. It's been a minute since I did this. Um, so you have to just move these back and forth until they find their happy spot. So it's about like that. This just sits on the outside here and on the inside there. You can then take that out and we can use it, put our ratchet onto here. Again, there's a square hole on the inside. You push it down, make sure it's really seated there nicely. Uh, and now you can see that that ratchet catch catches into these um, and then you're happy. So we can pull that out for right now. Um, next, we are going to go with our hammer axle. This part seats through here. This hole might need to be drilled out a little bit depending on your printer, but you have this action here that basically it sits in this orientation, your hammer is on here, it gets pulled back, hammer comes up, and then it snaps forward again. So to get that snapping motion, we do need a, another spring. And then you also want to get your hammer catch and this gets attached to um, here. So you can see the little step up. That step up is facing up. So it's like outwards, it steps up, um, which means that this little kink here at the back sort of fits into this little divot here. 
um, that allows it to sort of surpass itself. Uh, again, we have a little piece of filament that's going to be our connector. And it's just, everything is finicky. Um, and it just goes together like that. So now we've got this hanging off of there. We can slide this into here. And this sits in this channel. This little spring is applying pressure onto here so that when it is here, this little piece at the back hits that. So now our trigger will actuate this. You can see that it surpasses. And then if the spring action is there, it springs back. So let's attach that spring. Can pull it out a little bit. The spring gets placed onto this little hook. And then uh, you might be able to guess. Um, we do use a piece of filament again. And that goes back into here. So this piece of filament is going to go into this hole, but has to go through this piece here. So it goes like that. And it'll pull this piece forward, and it'll apply a pressure here. Now we can put this into here. I see why we have everything sort of readied. And then finally, uh, for this little section, we put our body insert onto here. Uh, this might take a little bit of wiggling just to get everything to seat right. Again, it depends on your uh, printer. I find that the biggest issue here is that this spring is gonna be pulling on this. So it'll bend this piece of filament a little bit, which you can see this one's been bent several times. Um, which then makes lining up this hole slightly difficult. So you might have to just finagle that a little bit. Um, but it sort of goes down like that. Now you can see these pieces are sort of flush there. And then we put our hand in. Now this is the thing that interacts from our trigger to our barrel um, or our ratchet. Um, and this is a little finicky again. Goes in here. This spring is applying a pressure onto it. Um, that way it wants to sit into these holes to catch. And then, uh, you guessed it, we use another piece of filament as a axle here, and that gets attached onto this piece. Um, and now the sort of main components are assembled and it should work. Uh, I haven't put this together in over a month, so. You might have to give some wiggles back and forth, depending on your clearances and tolerances, um, but it should now ratchet. So that is a good first sign. You wanna check that here before you put your retaining rings on and start really buckling everything in. Um, so these will have to get sanded so that you find these sort of connections really nicely. After I've painted this, it has made it more difficult, of course. Um, there's a good little hammer, or a bad little hammer. So after that's been put on, I'm again going to check. And this whole way through, I want to check. There are a couple of spots that'll be like jammy. Um, I have mentioned that before. You can only go so far with plastic pieces um, and I just, I've, I've had enough of reprinting this project, and I think it is sort of within the vibe of the show that it breaks and jams a little bit. Um, so we're gonna chuck one of these bigger bearings on. Then we have our front retainer. Um, it used to do a lot more retaining, that's why it's called that. Now it's more of a spacer. Um, and then it gets placed on with another bearing. So that is now going to interface with our barrel. So. This part is semi-important. There is a specific way that this has to go onto here because there are technically four different ways because it's a square that you can shove this together. If you put the magnets in, there's technically two different ways. I believe they're different because I've put this on so many times and had it not line up um, that you want to make sure you look in here, you see where your square is. You look here. So right now my square is square with the um, mechanism. So I want to find a way in here 
that is square to one of these edges. So you can see the square is this way, this edge is square, so I want to put that edge up. That way when I put them together, this barrel is lined up with the like active barrel. So you might need to do a little bit of this, and you might have to sand the inside of your barrel to get your fit nice. And then there you go, you've got your main sort of mechanism. Now you might find as you do this, this is going to get harder and harder to like for the mechanism to work because you're putting more weight and more stress on the system. So it might take a little bit of sort of pushing around and feeling for all the little pieces to find their homes. And you might find that one barrel is slightly stickier depending on you know, how your ratchet printed and how these parts are interacting with each other. So everything's a little, you know, hinky, but I don't mind. Um, next, we're going to put on our hammers. These, you want to make sure that they are in the sort of down position because they pull up with the mechanism um, and they should sort of snap on and have a pressure fit onto these because they have a tiny little nubbin on the inside and there's a tiny little indent on here. Um, and they kind of, you know, snap together. If they don't snap, I find a bit of hot glue works really well um, because hot glue you can remove with uh, isopropyl alcohol. So from here, we can apply these guys. You might have to do, again, fitment sanding through here to make sure that they bite and they grab and everything is happy for this piece. But you can see that magnet snaps on nicely. And then we'll do the same thing here. Um, and then my print was slightly lifted here from the bed. So afterwards, I'm going to go through and fill all my seams. And I'll probably do a light age on this just so that it feels a little more like canonical and dirty. Um, so now we're basically there. I'm going to move this magnet out of the way because I don't want to jump around. Now we have our barrel tube. This just really slots into these holes. Um, I will probably use some hot glue for that just to sort of hold it a little more upright. Um, but if you glue these down like hard with super glue or something, you won't be able to open up the mechanism again. And I want to be able to open this forever. I always want to be able to fix it if it breaks or just take it apart and put it together because I enjoy that. Um, which means that when I seam this and I close these seams, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, clear acrylic paint and I'm just going to like put it on, wait till it's tacky and then wet brush it to just like hide these seams and then a little bit of the appropriate colors. Uh, but it'll mean that I can come in with a blade and I can slice along these seams and open it up again. So there it is. Uh, you can see the seam is still slightly visible, but like I mentioned, I want to be able to take it apart because uh, I like putting it back together and if it breaks or something goes wrong, I want to be able to have access to that. I, I also gave it a bit of a light age so that the names are a little more visible and it just feels a little more uh, canonical, like it's actually been out in the world. Um, I didn't go so far as to throw it into a bunch of acid like they do, um, but I'm still very happy with how it turned out. I also made a stand for it. Looks like this. The front little edge matches the bottom of the barrel and then this little notch matches up with the trigger. Uh, this way it can sit nicely on my desk and it doesn't apply any pressure onto my rails and bend them over time. Uh, it also lets me reach over very easily, pick it up, click it a couple times because it's fun and put it back down. So if you run into any issues, please reach out. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, uh, I'd be happy to help you figure out where it's not working uh, and, and to see how we can fix that uh, because it's a very fun prop. Um, I worked really hard on it. I had a lot of fun um, and I think other people should too. So yeah, that's it for now. I'm going to see what my next project is and uh, make something fun.